What's up, everybody? Tactical Sweet. Thanks for watching. So you just emptied a magazine. You're looking to do a quick reload and get back in the fight. How do you chamber around? Do you use your slide stop lever, or do you manually rack the slide? What should you do? Let's get in. All right, guys. So another hot button topic here. Um, how do you chamber around when you reload? Um, two schools of thoughts on this. One, you use your slide stop lever. And two, you manually rack the slide and then get back in the fight. Um, both work. Both have their pros and cons. I'm of the manually racking the slide school of thought, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, but what you hear most of the time for people that advocate using the slide stop lever is it's quicker. And it is. I will give you that. You're going to save yourself, granted, split seconds, um, getting back on target. And I'll run, a, I'll run kind of a side-by-side -side here of, of a, kind of a mock reload using your slide stop lever versus manually racking the slide. Now, the reason why it's quicker to use your slide stop lever is because you're using both hands. So, as you seat the magazine, you can then start taking your grip on the gun. Meanwhile, use the thumb on your firing hand to send the slide forward and get back in the fight. Whereas, if you're using the rack, the manual rack, you're going to have to seat your magazine and then with that same hand, come back over the top before you get back in. So, yes, you are going to save time using the slide stop lever. But I have pretty much three reasons why I choose to use the manual racking of the slide as my preferred method. Number one reason why I prefer using uh, manually racking the slide versus using your slide stop lever is a manual rack of the slide is going to work on every handgun, every semi-automatic handgun you pick up. It's going to work to chamber around. Um, the problem you run into with a slide stop lever is not every gun is the same. So you get used to your weapon. Glock, manual of arms on a Glock is pretty simple. You have, you have your trigger, you got a magazine release, and you got your slide stop lever. And that's it. There's no other controls on it. So, very easy to reach up there, hit that slide stop lever, send, send the slide forward. Um, let's say you pick up a 1911 that you're not familiar with. And, you know, maybe you got a, maybe you got a, you know, a, a thumb safety, maybe you got a decocker. You know, there's several different controls on there that you may not be familiar with that in a, in a scenario where you need to just pick up a weapon that's not yours, maybe you're at a friend's house, or whatever the situation is, you need a quick reload, now you have to stop and think and look at what you need to do to send that slide forward versus just racking the slide manually. Um, so for just for ease of using any weapon that you might have your hands on, running that slide is always going to work and you're not going to have to think about it. All right, so number two reason why I advocate manually running the slide. Um, it's, it's a sequence that you should already be familiar with doing uh, for a malfunction drill. So you're shooting, you pull the trigger, and it goes click instead of bang. What are you supposed to do? What do they teach you to do? Tap, rack, bang. Now, some people you'll, you'll see tap, rack, evaluate. Uh, if I'm in a if I'm on a gunfight, I'm tap rack bang, and if it still doesn't work, then I might try to find some cover and evaluate. But first thing I'm I'm gonna do is tap rack bang. So that being said, the reloading process is essentially the same thing. You're going to tap rack bang. So. Like I said, that sequence should already be ingrained in your muscle memory, so why not just keep using it anytime you know you're you're doing something that is is close to that. So malfunction drill or or just reloading, run that slide, get back in the fight. 
Okay, third reason, and uh, probably one of the most important reasons in my mind, um, and I've done this myself um, back when I used to utilize the uh, slide stop lever, and I've seen several other people do it as well, um, trying to do quick reloads, and they will get ahead of themselves with their thumb and actually send the slide forward before the magazine is fully seated. And it'll look something like this. Quick. But the problem is, there's no round in that chamber. You just sent that slide forward before you got a chance to seat the magazine. And just for the safety Nazis, those are snap caps. There's no live ammunition here. So, so before that magazine gets seated, you send the slide forward, and now you seat it. Then you get back up there and you get that, and then you're going to have to practice that malfunction drill, tap, rack, and bang. Uh, but at that point, you've given that target or that enemy a lot of time to get rounds on you or get to you if they don't have a, a gun. Um, so that's a big reason why I advocate manually running the slide, because it's impossible to do that. It's impossible to... Uh, get ahead of yourself and, and send the slide forward without chambering around because you have to use the same hand to do it. So you're going to seat that magazine and then you reach over the top. Impossible. It's always going to chamber around no matter what. It's always going to chamber around. So yeah, it, that's the way, that, that's kind of my idea, my school of thought on it. Um, I know a lot of people that use a slide stop lever and, and they advocate it because it's Again, it is quicker to get back in the fight uh, using the slide stop lever versus coming over the top and racking around. But, um, as with everything that I talk about, um, you have to look at the facts and evaluate what's important to you. Uh, to me, saving that split second, while most of the time I would advocate saving time um, and, and getting back on target quicker, in this instance, I think that the opportunity for failure there with getting getting ahead of yourself and possibly running the slide forward without chambering around is much more detrimental than losing that split second. Guaranteeing you're getting around in the chamber is is more important to me than getting that split second quicker on target. Um, it's one of the few times you'll ever see me advocate losing time getting back on target. But this is a, a unique situation where I feel that it's the time is less important than chambering the round. Because if you don't chamber the round, getting back on target doesn't do you any good. Alright guys, let me know what you think in the comments. As I said, uh, two schools of thought here. Not saying one's right and one's wrong. This is just my opinion on what works best for me. Um, I, I don't do these videos to tell people what to do. Um, I'm just trying to share my experience uh, and the things I've learned, uh, pass on to somebody else that may help them make a decision. Um, you may make a decision that's different from mine and that's fine. Um, I just do this to throw information out there for people that are, are looking for it. So yeah, please let me know in the comments, hit me up. I'm always open for discussion. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, Give me that thumbs up, and uh, by all means, subscribe. Stay up to date on any new videos coming out. Uh, we definitely got more in the works. We'll catch you next time. Until then, live life and have fun out there.